Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear students, we are welcome uh, to this discussion which is based on theory of moral development by Lawrence Goldberg. I am Dr. Iram Khan, assistant professor at IASC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. So uh, first of all, whenever we are talking about this moral uh, development theory of Goldberg, we have to see that what exactly morality is. Why, why we are going to discuss all these things, this moral development theory and all. So, what is morality? Morality is basically if we are going um, for a recognition of the distinction between good and evil or between right and wrong, then respect for and obedience to the rules of right conduct, the mental disposition or characteristic of behaving in a manner intended to produce good results, all these things can be recognized as morality. So now we come to the theory of moral development. And on my screen, you can see that there is the photograph of uh, Jean Piaget. Basically, this theory is given by Lawrence Kohlberg. But Lawrence Kohlberg expanded on the earlier work of cognitive theorist Jean Piaget. To explain the moral development of children, Kohlberg believed that moral development, like cognitive development, follows a, uh, a series of stages. Uh, he used the idea of moral dilemmas, stories that present conflicting ideas about two moral values, to teach 10 to 16 year old boys about morality and values. The best known moral dilemma created by Kohlberg is the Haynes dilemma which discusses the idea of obeying the law versus saving a life. Kohlberg emphasized that it is the way an individual reasons about a dilemma that determines positive moral development. Now let us see the stages of moral reasoning. What exactly these stages say? After presenting people with various moral dilemmas, Kohlberg received or reviewed people's responses and placed them in different stages of moral reasoning. According to Kohlberg, an individual progresses from the capacity for pre-conventional morality to the capacity for conventional morality and towards attaining post-conventional morality. And uh, this post-conventional uh, morality is actually not attained by many. So each level of morality contains two stages which uh, provide the basis for moral development in various contexts. So let us see that uh, what exactly the Kohlberg's stages of moral development actually are. So I, I have just listed the three stages. So Kohlberg identified three levels of moral reasoning. The first one is pre-conventional, then we have got conventional and post-conventional. Each level is associated with increasingly complex stages of moral development. So now let us see uh, the first level. The first level which is also uh, called as pre-moral or pre-conventional morality. And according to Kohlberg, the age group which lies under this uh, this particular uh, age, uh, like this particular uh, level, is age 4 to 10 years. Age 4 to 10 years. And there are two stages under this. The first stage 
which is also called as obedience and punishment orientation or the stage of obedience for avoiding punishment uh, and then we have got the stage 2 which is instrumental orientation or the stage of conforming to obtain rewards and favors in return. So first let us see that what exactly this the meaning or what exactly inside this pre-moral or pre-conventional morality uh, is there. So uh, this pre-moral or, uh, or conventional or pre-conventional morality uh, basically in, under this level a child's sense of morality is externally controlled. Children accept and believe the rules of authority, uh, basically authority figures such as parents uh, and teachers. A child with pre-conventional morality has not yet adopted or internalized society's conventions regarding what is right or wrong, but instead focuses largely on external consequences that certain actions may bring. Now, under this uh, level 1, uh, we, we just have talked about stage 1. So, now let us understand what exactly the stage 1, which is obedience and punishment orientation, is all about. So, the stage 1 focuses on the child's desire to obey rules and avoid being punished. So, just for example, if, if we discuss one example, an action is perceived as morally wrong because the person doing it is punished. The worse the punishment for the act, the more bad the act is perceived to be. So, this is under the stage 1 of level 1. Now, let us see what exactly the stage 2, which is instrumental orientation, is all about. So, stage 2 is represented by the position in which right behavior is defined by whatever the individual believes to be in their best interest. Stage 2 reasoning shows a limited interest in the needs of others uh, only to the point where it might further the individual's own interest. As a result, concern for others is not based on loyalty or intrinsic respect, but rather a, a give and take mentality is dominated. For example, when a child is asked by the, uh, by the parents to do some work, the child in return asks that what I will get if I do it. And the parent offers the child something of uh, his liking uh, as an incentive. So this, is, this happens in the stage 2 which is under the level 1. Now let us see the level 2. Level 2 which is also uh, called as conventional morality. And according to Kohlberg, uh, this particular level or conventional morality lies under the age group of 10 to 13 years. Under this particular level, again we have got two stages. The first stage here is the stage of a good interpersonal relationship, basically a good boy, nice girl orientation. This is the stage of maintaining mutual relations and approval of others. Then there is the stage number 4, which is maintaining social order uh, or law and order orientation. This stage is of obedience for avoiding censure by or censor by higher authority or social systems. So now let us understand what exactly all these three of those terms which are written here mean. So, first see that what is the level 2 uh, which is conventional morality, what exactly it means. Uh, throughout the conventional level, a child's sense of morality is tied to personal and societal relationships. Children continue to accept the rules of authority figures. But this is now due to their belief that this is necessary to ensure positive relationships. And societal order. Sticking to rules and conventions is somewhat rigid during these stages and a rules appropriateness or fairness is often questioned. So here from this uh, particular stage questioning starts. So now let us see that what exactly uh, is peculiar to the stage number three or uh, the, the stage three under the level number 
so stage 3 which is the good interpersonal relationship stage or the good interpersonal personal relationship orientation stage this is the stage of maintaining mutual relations and approval of others in stage in this stage children want the approval of others and act in ways to avoid disapproval emphasis is placed on good behavior and people being nice to others so this happens in this stage number 3 now let us see what happens in stage number 4 which is basically maintaining social order law and order orientation so in stage 4 the child blindly accepts rules and conventions because of their importance in maintaining a functioning society rules are seen as being the same for everyone and obeying rules by uh, doing what one is supposed to do is seen as valuable and important most active members of society actually remain at stage 4 where moral uh, where morality is uh, still uh, predominantly uh, dictated by an outside force which is which is in in most of the terms the social order so this this was the stage number four under the level two so now uh, up till now we have discussed two levels and uh, four stages now let us see the stage number three uh, basically the level three level three so level three is post conventional morality involving self-accepted moral principles and according to Kohlberg uh, the age group is uh, like uh, level 3 starts with the age group of 13 and there is there is a very kind of funny thing that uh, maybe people not achieve uh, this stage until middle or later adulthood and in few of the cases maybe they never achieve this stage or this level under this uh, level, we have got again two stages, stage number five and six. Uh, stage number five is social contract orientation or the stage of conforming to the democratically accepted laws and rules of community welfare. Stage number six says that it is a stage of universal ethical principle orientation. This is a stage of conforming to the universal ethical principles and the call of one's, uh, basically one's conscience. So, uh, the, the call of conscience is important in the stage number six, which is the final stage. So, now let us understand that what exactly level three is all about. So, throughout the post-conventional level, or the level three a person's sense of morality is defined in terms of more abstract principles and values people now believe that some laws are unjust and should be changed or eliminate so the sense of a, a kind of protest starts if a person enters to this level three so we have to see that whether the person enters or not, this is also questionable. So, uh, the level is marked by a growing reali realization that individuals are separate entities from society. And the individuals may disobey rules inconsistent with their own principles. So, if a rule which is actually placed by the society and it is actually... Uh, countering with the rules and regulations or the principles of a person there is a possibility that there should there there can be a retaliation by this person so this can happen at this level uh, then the post conventional individuals alleviate their own moral evaluation of a, a situation over social conventions their behavior especially at stage 6 can sometimes be confused with the people at the pre-conventional level. Some theorists uh, have speculated that many people may never reach this uh, level of abstract moral reasoning, which is actually again and again mentioned that most of the people don't reach to this level. Uh, now let us discuss in detail that what exactly the 
stage number five, which is the the uh, which is under this level number three, uh, stage number five, which is social contract orientation. What is this stage all about? This is a stage of conforming to the democratically accepted laws and rules of community welfare. So in this stage five, the world is viewed as holding different opinions, rights, and values. Such perspectives should be mutually respected as unique to each person or community. Laws are regarded as social contracts rather than rigid, uh, rigid edicts or very kind of rigid laws are now being questioned. Those uh, that do not promote the general welfare should be changed. So people start questioning. Uh, when like they say that if there is something, some law or some sort of uh, rule or regulation, which is not basically giving uh, people equal rights or is not uh, of the welfare of human being, then it can be changed. So this type of thought process starts. Uh, then they say that those, uh, those laws can be changed when necessary to meet the greatest good for the greatest number of people. This is achieved, uh, this is achieved uh, through majority decisions and uh, inevitable compromises. Uh, democratic governments are theoretically based on uh, this stage five reasoning. Okay. So now we will see that what exactly the stage number six is. So stage number six is basically the universal ethical principle orientation, uh, the stage of conforming to the universal ethical principles and the call of one's conscience. So in this stage or in the stage number six, moral reasoning is based on abstract reasoning using universal ethical principles. Generally, the chosen principles are abstract rather than uh, concrete and focus on ideas such as equality, dignity or respect. People choose the ethical uh, principles they want to follow. And if they violate these principles, they feel guilty. In this way, the individual acts because it is morally right to do so and not because he or she wants to avoid punishment. Uh, it is uh, in the best interest. It is expected. Then it is legal and it is previously agreed upon. So all these things are like very much uh, enlightened. So persons who reach to this stage number six are those who are basically enlightened people. So uh, although Kohlberg interested, uh, in, he insisted on that uh, stage number six exists. He said that there, there is a stage number six uh, and he found it difficult to identify individuals who consistently operate at this level. So it is very difficult to find a person in society who is at this particular stage number six. So uh, this was all about uh, the three stages of uh, uh, Kohlberg's uh, theory of moral development. Uh, there is also one very interesting fact that uh, Kohlberg's theory was very much criticized by a lot of people. And uh, why it was criticized and what were the reason behind this criti criticism, we will just have a look on all those things. So Kohlberg has been criticized for his assertion that women seem to be deficient in their moral reasoning abilities when compared to men. Uh, this is again very much uh, contradictory, but this is actually there and uh, the entire experiment or the that uh, Haynes dilemma, this experiment was totally done on uh, men and boys. So this is this is a very uh, kind of cr uh, critical this thing. It is it is thoroughly criticized and one of his research assistant, uh, her name was uh, Carol Gillian in 1982. She, uh, she criticized that uh, and she was the uh, she was basically under the mentorship of uh, Kohlberg. So basically he uh, he mentored Kohl, Kohlberg mentored her. But this lady, Carol Gillian, 
she criticized uh, the theory of moral development by Kohlberg uh, because it was based what what was uh, her point. She said that this theory is uh, based on so so narrowly on um, on the research using the sample uh, which was men. All men were white, like all white men, then upper class. So all white and upper class men and boys were taken as the sample once uh, Kohlberg was actually working on his theory. So she argued that women are not deficient in their moral reasoning and instead proposed that males and females reason differently. Girls and women focus more uh, on, uh, on staying connected and maintain interpersonal relationships. So, which is very much moral. So, this uh, lady, Carol, uh, uh, this lady, Carol Gillian, uh, she made this uh, particular uh, criticism on this theory of moral development of Goldberg. Then, Goldberg's theory has been criticized for emphasizing justice to the exclusion of other values. So, this, this was another criticism. Then some critiques argue that Kohlberg's stages are culturally biased. So they say that uh, the stages, the first to sixth stage, uh, most of the cases uh, in different different cultures, uh, the, the, the children actually achieve or they, they underpass the stages in different different age groups. So they say that uh, defining the age group for particular stage is actually not that much useful. Another criticism of Kohlberg's theory is that people frequently demonstrate significant inconsistency in their moral judgments. So this was uh, like uh, all those critiques of Kohlberg's theory. So now let us sum up what exactly we have studied today. Lawrence uh, Kohlberg expanded on the earlier work of cognitive theorist Jean Piaget to explain the moral development of children, which he believed follows a series of stages. Then Kohlberg defined three levels of moral development, pre-conventional, conventional and post-conventional. Each level has two distinct stages. During the pre-conventional level, a child's sense of morality is externally controlled. Then children accept and believe the rules of authority figures such as parents and teachers and they uh, judge an action based on its consequences. So during the conventional level an individual's sense of morality is tied to personal and societal relationships. Children continue to accept the rules of authority figures but this is now because they believe that this is necessary to ensure positive relationships and societal order. Then, then we uh, discussed about that during the post conventional level a person's sense of morality is defined in terms of more abstract principles. So uh, the more abstract principles are defined under the level number two. So this level number two is basically having again two uh, stages uh, which we have discussed. Then um, in le level number uh, three we discussed about the post conventional level. Then uh, we saw that Kohlberg's theory have been criticized for its cultural and gender bias towards white upper class men and boys. It also fails to account for inconsistent uh, or inconsistencies within moral judgments. So, uh, dear students, with this we have come to an end of uh, this particular session. I hope that you liked this discussion on this uh, moral development uh, theory of Kohlberg. We will see each other uh, in another session. Uh, till then, uh, just keep on reading and studying. Thank you so much.